Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. Today we will have our vocabulary quiz number 14 on the words that we learned from day number 66 through 70 in our vocabulary series. Let's get going. Day number 66. We are not going to go into too much details. If you want to learn the words properly in, in depth with proper pronunciation and so forth, you can watch the appropriate video. Let's begin with day number 66. On day 66, very first word we learned was how do we pronounce this word? It's pronounced ash a lan. Ashalan, it's a noun. Echelon. What is an echelon? An echelon is a level, is a level or grade in an organization, in an or organization or a group or an institution or a society as a whole or the society as a whole. To say that Michael started out as a janitor in our firm, but very rapidly he moved to the topmost echelon of the organization. That means he had quite rapid uh, succession of promotions. Now he's the vice president. He is the he is at the uppermost echelon of our organization. Uppermost echelon means uppermost grade, uppermost level. We can talk about organization. We can talk about institution. We can talk about a group or a society as a whole. People who are said to belong to the highest echelon of the society are the elites. They are the elites. They belong to the highest echelon. Let's move on. The next word, next word we learned was waffle, which is a colloquial term. Which is a tell you what, why don't we do it from the top? Because otherwise I'll struggle for space. As I said, it's a colloquial term, it's not a formal speech, it's an informal speech, to waffle that is. Colloquial is the word, if you recall, we learn on day number five. On day number five of our vocabulary series, we learned about colloquial, which means an informal speech, not a formal speech. Not something that you will put in a writing or, or, or in, a, in a formal speech, but when you're speaking informally with your friends and so forth, you say, "Well, he waffles." To waffle means to not speak, uh, to to not uh, say the truth. To speak, to not rather to not give straight answer. To not give straight answer. If I ask you a simple question and you're dodging my question, that's what it means. It means to dodge. Dodge a question, like politicians do most of the time. If you dodge a question, if you do not give a straight answers, if you, if you, if you, if you speak or write, it could also be in writing. Evasively, evasively, evasive, evade means to avoid something, avoid getting caught. You, you, you are waffling. You're not giving me a straight answer. What we can do now is to put three more words which will qualify a synonym of waffling and the words are it means to to equivocate if you equivocate you're not giving me a straight answer this is something we learned on day number 27 to to prevaricate again we learned it on day number 27 so if you're prevaricating, that means you're not giving a straight answer. You're dodging the questions. A simple question is asked instead of giving a simple answer. You're going around and around and around, but never getting to the point. You're just not answering my questions in a straightforward manner. To qualify. Qualify is a straightforward sound word, but it is not a straightforward word. It's not a simple word because it has other meaning. That meaning is this, to qualify. You will learn all of these three words if you watch day number 27. Just type in vocabulary words, day number 27, and you will learn these three words. 
It doesn't matter which exam you're preparing for, just type in the name of the exam. For example, GRE vocabulary words or GMAT vocabulary words and the video will pop right up. Let's move on. The next word we learned was Under, under other colloquial term, not a formal speech, what does it mean to cop out? Well, again, to put it in a colloquial term, so this is a colloquial term itself, but if, I want, if you want to answer also in a colloquial term, it just means to chicken out, to chicken out, to fail, to do something, or to take responsibility for something, to take responsibility for something out of timidity, because you're timid, you're covered. Out of cowardice, out of timidness or timidity or cowardice. Cowardice Cowardice, as we have learned before, is a noun of being covered. Covered is an adjective. So if you if you chicken out, you, you fail to do something, or you did something wrong, and you don't want to take the responsibility for it, you say, oh man, what a cop out. That means you're chickening out. You're chickening it out. You understand? Let's move on. The next word we learned on that day, day number 66, that is. Day number 66 was... Intransigent. Intransigent. If you like. In. Intransigent. I should have. I should have not written it so low. Let's put it up here. Because I don't like writing too low. Intransigent. If you're being intransigent, that means you're unwilling to compromise. You're unwilling. Unwilling to compromise. Now listen, if you have trouble reading my handwriting, I have a good excuse for, 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 for that. Uh, the fact that my handwriting is atrocious, it's horrendous, is because I always read what I write. So if, as long as you're paying attention, I always read as soon as I, uh, as, as soon as I finish writing something. So if you pay attention, you will know what I'm writing here. Unwilling to compromise. Unbending. Unbending. Unyielding. Unyielding, unbending, unwilling to compromise. It just means to be stubborn. I don't know if stubborn has two stub stubborn. I'm not sure if stubborn has two B's or one B. If you're being stubborn, you're not willing to compromise, you're not willing to negotiate, you're just uh, uh, set in your own way, so you're unyielding, unbending, you're being intransigent. And in the, in the, in the noun is intransigence. Let's move on. Day number 67. On day 67 we learned two words. Acclimate. Ac -lo. Acclimate. Acclimate, which is a noun, and Assimilate. A sim a assimilate. What's the difference between assimilate and acclimate? Let's talk about it, shall we? Acclimate, uh, acclimate means to get used to, to get used to one's one's surrounding one's atmosphere, one's environment, one's situation. But this is this is being explained, this 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 is being explained, this is being meant to do uh, in, in the physical sense of the word. In the physical sense of the word, when I say I want to get used to my environment, that means uh, maybe I've, I've moved to a new, new, new part, of the, another part of the world, and I'm just getting acclimated to the, to the, to, to the weather, to the atmosphere, to the, to the, to the, 
daily temperature. Do you understand? Or if you first, when you first step in your, uh, if you're if you're about to take a bath and you run the bath water, and as you step in, it's this kind of little hot. It takes a couple of minutes for your body to get acclimated, to get used to the temperature. So this is in the physical sense of the word. Assimilate has the same meaning, but in the intellectual sense of the in the intellect intellectual sense uh, sense of the word, as in to get used to a new culture, a new environment in the sense not in the physical sense, not in the temperature, but in the sense of a intellectual uh, context, to get used to a new culture, to get used to a new society, to get used to new new mores, new new traditions, and so forth. Let's write it down. To get used to 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 adapt rather, not get used to rather, to adapt to adapt a new culture to adapt to to adapt to a new culture new language new customs new mores mores is a word that we learn on day number 45. What does mores mean? Well, mores means exactly what we just said here. Mores means, mores means norms, values, traditions, customs. To, to get used to mores of a new society that you move to, means to get used to their customs, their traditions, their norms, their their way of living. And uh, if you do that, that means you have assimilated yourself in a new culture. You understand? So assimilation, which is a noun, assimilation is very different than getting acclimated. Acclimated is in the physical context, in the, in, in the physical uh, sense of the word. Let's move on. Assimilate and acclimate. next word we have is eclectic e black tick three syllables e black tick eclectic what does it mean when you describe something as being eclectic, it's an adjective. When you describe something as being eclectic, that means it came from, coming from, varied sources. Coming from varied sources. Coming from various sources. In other words, in other words, for example, for example, if you walk in somebody's uh, house, if you walk in somebody's living room, and you notice that uh, in one corner there is a sethi from uh, France and there's, 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 there's a, a, a piece of uh, furniture there from China, there's another piece of furniture from England, and there's another one from, uh, from the Arabs, uh, Arab world, you said that they're furnish the furnishing in this room is very eclectic. Maybe they have artworks from different, different cultures. It's not all one culture. They have things from several different parts of the world. You will say that your collection is very eclectic. It comes from various different sources. It's, it's, it's not, it's not uniform. You understand? And the word is eclectic. It comes from various sources. It comes from coming from this per. It. Disparate. Disparate means. Disparate means various. Various. Dissimilar. Varied. Dissimilar. Different. Distinct. So if you say that your collection is very disparate, that means it comes from various different sources, it is very eclectic. Let's move on. The last word we learn on day number 67 
It's also a colloquial term. I don't know why we have so many colloquial terms. And the term is, it's not a word, it's an expression, is again as I said, it's informal, it's, 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 it's informal speech, it's not a formal speech. What does it mean to muck up? Now the reason I cover this is because I have I have a habit of saying this is a British term to muck up. And I have to be careful because a lot of the times Americans just assume that I said something beginning with letter F. So I always have to explain to them, muck up as in M, not an F. But they mean the same thing. To muck up means to, to bungle something. To bungle something. To make a mess of something. To make a mess of something. To botch. To buy, or if you like, to make to make to make pigs breakfast of something. It's also a British term, British expression. That is, to make if you if, if somebody says if somebody tell you that oh man you made a pigs breakfast of it, that means you made a mess of it. It's a disaster. This is not done right. This is a pig's breakfast. You made a pig's breakfast of it. You really mucked it up. You really mucked it up. It's an M, not an F. Do you understand? Let's go on. Page num uh, day number 68. Day number 68. Just give me one second. Day 68. first word we learned was flagrant flay grunt flagrant what does it mean if something is described as being flagrant it's an adjective if something is described as being flagrant that means it is something that is Outstandingly bad, something that is horribly bad, something that is obviously bad, something that is. I don't know why I have the urge to write obviously in capital letter, something that is obviously bad, something that is something that is a mistake that is a mistake. That is a mistake that is easily noticeable. A mistake that is easily noticeable. If, if someone says this is flagrant, this mistake is flagrant, that they're telling you this is very easily noticeable. This is not a tiny mistake. The mistake that you made is not tiny, it's not minor, it's not trivial. No, no, no. This is this would not qualify as a trivial mistake. It is quite flagrant, which means it's outstandingly bad. It's not just a matter of uh, technicality. This is a big deal. You understand? Let's move on then. The next word we learn on day number 68. On day number 68 was... Glaring. Glaring. The word glaring is a tricky word, which is why we learn, which is why we covered it. It has three different meanings. What does it mean to glare at someone? To glare at someone. That's the that's the idiom. To glare at someone. One does not glare. One does not glare on someone. One does not glare to someone. One glares at someone. What does it mean to glare at someone? Which means to look at someone. To look at someone in a very angry manner. If you're mad at someone and if you look at someone in a very angry manner, you're glaring at me. See, I'm glaring. That's the first meaning. 
Second meaning, but doesn't have to be first and second, but another meaning of the word glaring means something that is very shiny, something that is very shiny. Something that is very shiny. So if, if you look at something that is very shiny and the light is reflecting off that thing, it's oh man, that is it's glaring. In my, I, I can't, it's blinding, it's, it's blinding me, I can't look at it, I can't look at it, it's glaring, it's very shiny. So you put your hand up there to block the, block the light because it's too shiny, glaring. Another way you can use the word glaring, if somebody des describes something as a glaring mistake, a glaring mistake is something that is, something that is, obviously bad. Something that is, but when I say obviously bad, I don't mean I, I, it's not written properly. Something that is bad in an obvious manner. You can see it very easily. You don't have to look for it. It's very easy to see that it's wrong. The mistake is glaring. The mistake is flagrant. It's very easy to notice it. It's very obvious to look at it. It's not done properly. Do you understand? Something that is obviously bad. Something that is poorly done. Something that is poorly done. Something that is poorly done. Let's move on. The word was glaring. The next word we learned was egregious. I assure you that in the actual videos my handwriting is not this poor. I do take my time. Here we are in a hurry because we have to cover five days worth of words in just one video. As it is, it's going to be a very long video. So I'm just trying to save a few seconds here and there without giving up too much in terms of learning. E, gri, you see, first, first syllable is E, gri, just, just, egregious is how we pronounce it. Again, it's an adjective. If something is described as being egregious, it means it is something that is outstandingly bad, something that is outstandingly bad, something that is horribly bad, something that is, something that is flagrant. It's not a tiny mistake. If you did something wrong, and if your actions are described as being egregious, that means what you did was not something tiny, was not something trivial. Some, you did something really bad. It's one thing to commit a small crime, but if you do something that is horribly bad, terribly bad, then such an action is described as an egregious action an egregious action. That means that action was horribly bad, terribly bad. Let's move on. Day number 68. The word was egregious. Day 68. Conspicuous. Con big you, us. Conspicuous. If something is conspicuous, if, if something is described as being conspicuous, that means it is easily noticeable. Something that is easily noticeable. Not necessarily because it's bad, it's just easily noticeable. Something that attracts attention. Something that attracts Or, or if you want to, if you want to put it in the colloquial terms, something that is show offy. If you're trying to show off, if you're trying to show off, so, then if it's something is show offy, you say, "Boy, that is quite conspicuous. That is quite conspicuous." Let's learn the next word.
They are all related. The next two, three words are going to be all related. The next word we learned was os, ten, te, shush, shush, ostentatious. You have to say it together. You can't say it slowly, you can't chop it up. As, ten, e, shush, ostentatious. What does it mean if something is described as being ostentatious? Well, it means it's show off it. You're trying to show off. It is boastful. It is meant to impress others. It is meant to impress others. I don't know why there is an I a dot there, there is no dot. Impress. It is meant to impress someone. If you pull a, if you pull up in a very fancy car, well, that's pretty ostentatious. It's pretty ostentatious. It's very conspicuous that uh, that uh, that car, that watch you're wearing, that suit that you're wearing, it's pretty ostentatious, it's pretty conspicuous. It's pretty pretentious. Another word we learned was synonym of this word is Pretentious, and I'm not going to write all the meaning, it's basically the same thing, they're synonyms. Pre ten pretentious, 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 ostentious. Oh, sorry, not ostentatious, rather. You see, I made a mistake here. I left out, I left out the third, third syllable here. Ostentatious, ostentatious, and pretentious. Pretentious only has three syllables. One, two, three. This one has four. One, two, three, four. It has four syllables. Let's move on. The next word we learned was pompous. Pompous is very simple, obviously. Very simple because it only has two syllables. Uh, pompous. Which simply means that you are an exaggerated show of self-importance. If, if a person is described as pompous, if a person is described as pompous, that means you are telling me that that person, he thinks that he is very important, that he is a hot shot. Again, it's a, it's a colloquial term. Pompous, you see, look at me. Hmm. Yes, Mr. Kishwani, you see? I'm being pompous. Show off it. I think that I'm very important. If somebody behaves like that, you say that he's behaving in a very pompous manner. You understand? He's pompous. He is pompous. She is very pompous. She thinks very highly of herself. She thinks very highly of herself. She's full of it. That's another colloquial term to be full of it. To be full of it means that you think that you are you are you are very important, that you you are above a lot of people. And if you behave in that manner, you're being pompous. You're full of it. You are full of it. That's it, that's the expression. You don't have to tell what it is. Every if you say you're full of it, that means that you're being pompous. It's full of it. The word pompous actually comes from the word pomp. Simple word, pomp, which is a noun, which means to be vain. And from the word vain, we have the word vanity. It means to be vain or to be ostentatious. And the word is pomp. Let's move on then. The last word we learned was flamboyant. Flem, flem, boy, flem, boy, aunt, aunt, boy, flem, flamboyant. What does it mean to be flamboyant? It's an adjective. What does it mean to be flamboyant? That means something that is. Now this is not this is not this is not being pompous. If you describe something as being flamboyant, 
This is not being pompous. This is not being ostentatious. This is not being uh, conspicuous. If you describe something as, as, as being flamboyant, that means it's very rich in design. It's very, it's noticeable because it's very rich in design. It is noticeable. It is easily noticeable. Because it is very rich in design. It is ornate. It is colorful. It is richly colored. It is highly elaborate. Some designs are very flamboyant. A flamboyant display means this is very richly designed, so lots of colors, lots of designs, and such a thing is said to be flamboyant. Let's move on. Day number 69. Day number 69. What does it mean to be pedantic? Per Dan Tick. This is day number 69. Our penultimate day. Pedantic means to be overly scholarly. To be to be overly scholarly. To show off to show off one's knowledge. To show off one's knowledge. For example, for example, if you if you did something, if you did so, if you gave me something, or if you did something, and I noticed some mistake in it, a mistake that is very technical in in nature, a very small mistake, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So before I say something to you, I might want to apologize. I might start out by apologizing to you. Listen, I don't mean to be pedantic, which means I don't want to show off how much I know. I don't want to show off the whole. Oh, look at me, I'm a hot shot scholar. I don't mean to do that. I don't mean to be pedantic, but this word should have been that word. Oh, this term is not the right term. The proper term is this term. But it's not a very big mistake. It's a very tiny mistake. You're picking on a very nitty-gritty detail. So you start out with a listener. I don't mean to be pedantic, but that's what this is. So now you're saying you're apologizing, so it's not a big deal. But if you don't say that in the beginning, and if you just start nitpicking small things, then of course it's annoying, because you're just trying to show off how much you know. You're just trying to show off how much you know. Do you understand? And if you do that, you're being pedantic. The next three or four words that we're going to talk about, they all mean the same thing. They're all synonyms. They're all synonyms. So here's the first word. Hoodlum. Hoodlum. It's a noun. It's a thug. A hoodlum is a thug. It's a gangster. And so is ruffian. Rough E. Un. Some people pronounce it as ruffian, and some people pronounce it as ruffian. Ruffian or ruffian is the same, so they're both considered correct pronunciation, and it basically means the same thing. It's a thug, a gangster, a rowdy person, a person who does not behave very well. Let's learn one more word. A miscreant. Mis -cree and a miscreant is a bad guy. Is a is a bad guy. 
He's a villain. He's a hoodlum. A ruffian. If you describe somebody as being miscreant, boy, he's, he's a hoodlum. He's a hoodlum. He's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a villain. He's a bad guy. Do you understand? So the, do you know if they caught the miscreant? The people who came and broke our window the other day. You know, do you know if they, the police managed to call, catch the miscreant? Oh yes, they caught the miscreant. They caught the bad guys. They caught the hoodlums, the ruffians, the gangster. Let's move on then. So that was hoodlum, ruffian and miscreant. The next word we're going to learn is, or rather next word that we did learn on day number 69 was it's a fun word Hubble D Hoy What does it mean when you describe somebody as a Hubble D Hoy? It's usually described, not usually, it is used to describe a boy, not a, not a girl, not a female. A hobbledyhoy is a boy, it's a young boy, it's a young, it's a, it's a young, a young, gaudy, adolescent boy, an awkward boy. A young, as I said, it's usually a boy, a, a young, gawky, adolescent boy, a boy, a young boy who really doesn't know how to behave properly, he's very clumsy, he's very awkward in his behavior, in his manners, in his speech, and such an awkward person who doesn't know how to behave properly, who is very awkward, who is very clumsy, you would describe that he's not very refined, you would describe him as a hobbledyhoy. Gawky simply means. Awkward, clumsy. Awkward, clumsy. That's it. We're done with those two words. The next three or four words that we learn after that, they all have to do with stealing something. Stealing something, plundering something, looting something. Let's begin. Pilfer. Pilfer is a word. Means to steal. To to nick. Uh, again, that's a colloquial term. It's a British term. To nick something. To means to, means to steal something. To to filch. Purloin to purloin. They all mean the same thing. To steal, to nick, to flit, to filch, to purloin. That means you're stealing it. And the word was pilfer. Pilfer. Let's keep on going. Only God knows how many minutes we've been in this video now. The next word we have is plunder. Plunder is a plunder is related to being uh, to stealing and uh, to to nick something, to pilfer something, but not quite. Plunder is a little bit of different a different nuance. Plunder. means to loot, to loot, to take something by force, to take something by force, whereas pilfer simply means to take something when nobody is looking and usually it is of a trivial value. Well, it doesn't have to be trivial, but that's what it means, to pilfer, to purloin, to, to filch, 
uh, to nick means you steal something when nobody's looking. To loot, of course, is very different. You walk in there and you you, you start looting you know, by force. Do you understand? Plunder. And the next word was pillage. Pill, edge, pillage, which also means to loot. They're related. That was the end of day number 69. I'm very anxious to finish day number 70 because as, as I can tell, this is getting to be a very long video. Day 70, we learned Let me change the marker. I think this marker is Morbon. This marker is Morbon. ND. That means it's about to die. This marker is Morbon. It is about to die. It is, it is at the verge of dying. And so is this one. Per. O. Leave. Purportedly. What does it mean? Purportedly. It means supposedly. It means supposedly. That's what you're claiming. You know, supposedly. Did he, did he finish the homework? Did he finish his work? Did he finish the project? Well, purportedly, supposedly, that's what he told me. Supposedly he'd finished it. Let's move on. The next word we learned was... Ostensible. Or... Stand... So, well, O stand so well ostensible when you when you say it properly is uh, together that is when you when you put put it together ostensible that means something that gives the appearance of being true something that gives the appearance of something that it is not something something that gives an appearance. Of something that is not. Appearance. So an ostensible reason, if someone says that that was his ostensible reason, that means that's the reason he gave me, that's the reason he told you why he was doing it, that's what he said, that's what he claimed, but that's not the real reason. It's, it's, that's his ostensible reason. That means it's something that gives an appearance of something, but it is not in reality. For example, for example, you said that, well, Michael is very keen on going to church this Sunday. You say, oh, I didn't know Michael was that religious. Well, he went to church last Sunday, and he's very keen on going to church this Sunday. Oh, I didn't realize he was that religious. Well, that's his ostensible reason. He's very keen on going to church. But of course, we all know the real reason is that he's hoping that he will he will see the girl that he met last Sunday in the church. He's hoping that he will meet her again. That's the real reason why he wants to go. But his ostensible reason is that he's very religious. He says, oh, I want to go to church because it's good to go to church. But that's not the real reason. We all know that's the ostensible reason. Do you understand? That's what he claims it to be, but that's not reality. Let's move on. The very last word we learned on day number 70 was a very simple word, one syllable word, and the word is why. Why. What does it mean to why? It's a word. It means to shoot for something, to shoot for something, to strive for something. To shoot for something, to strive for something, to contend. I think that this might not be the last word actually, I just realized. 
No, this is not the last word because I just realized we have to learn this word, contain. To take part, contain means to take part, to take part in a contest or a competition. And the first, that's the same as this one. And that means to contain. Contain means to take part in a contest or a competition. And if you take part, if you're taking part in, in a contest or a competition, you're wine. You're contending. And if you're contending, the person who is contending is said to be a contender. A contender is a, is a noun. Whenever I hear the word contender, I think of, uh, I, I remember this uh, classic movie, and I can never remember the name of the movie, so I don't know if it will help you or not, but there's a, there's a classic, there's a very famous line in that movie, and the person says, I could have been somebody, I could have been a contender, I could have been somebody, I could have been a contender. And the word is contend, which means to take part in a competition. So how would you use the word why? How would you use the word why? Well, there were 40,000 people at the match. There were 40,000 spectators, and they were all, and they were all, they were all vying, vying for the perfect spot. to watch the game. Apparently the, 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 the seats are not assigned. You just dash in there when they open the door. And at that point, everybody goes in there because everybody wants to get a good spot to sit, to sit, uh, sit at uh, to watch the game. Everybody's vying for the perfect spot. Everybody's competing for the com perfect spot. Everybody dashes in. Everybody's vying for a perfect spot. Do you understand? Maybe there are there are there are spectators uh, who are about to watch. Uh, uh, they have gathered together to to witness the launch of a shuttle, and they are all vying for the perfect spot to to watch the takeoff of the shuttle. Everybody wants to get the best spot. Vying. Vying, which means to take part in a competition. Let's move on. Yes, I know you're getting impatient. It is going to end soon. It is going to end soon. There are only two more words left. How do you pronounce this word? How do you pronounce this word? It has a G in it. It has a G in it. But, it's, but the pronunciation has absolutely nothing to do with the word letter G. M Embroil you. Embroil you. As you can see, even though it has G in it, we never heard the letter G. Embroil you. What is an embroil you? An embroil you is a nasty situation that you find yourself in, and you where it is difficult to extricate yourself. A difficult, nasty situation that you find yourself in. A difficult, nasty situation that you find yourself in. Where it is difficult to extricate oneself F extricate means to disentangle oneself to free yourself from a from, from a complicated situation uh, complicated situation uh, is described as an imbroglio 
and the situations where it's difficult to get out of, you're, you're entangled into it, and now you don't know how to free yourself, and such a mass is said to be an imbroglio. And you try your very best for some sort of an extrication. We're done. Bye now.